Hey everyone, Kevin here. With the holidays coming up and with all this AI news going on, I thought I would bring in a guest today. We have one of our other hosts on this channel, Elizabeth, and we're going to talk a little bit about AI since there's just so much going on in this space. Wonderful. Thank you, Kevin. And yes, with the holidays right around the corner, everyone is looking for ways to make their lives a little bit easier. So a conversation around AI, it seems like really good timing. Awesome. So lots of our viewers are interested in AI and are wanting to begin using it more on a day-to-day -day basis. What are some of the tools that you are finding the most value out of right now and that you're using on a more of a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, no, and and there there are so many AI tools there's out so there. There's so many. Um, it feels like every day there's a new company popping up and they have a new AI tool that solves some other problem. Sometimes it's the same problem that other tools solve. Um, but yeah, there are so many AI tools out there. I've started incorporating AI into a lot of my workflows or the things that I do. Um, so one of the tasks that I do a lot of is sending emails. Um, and uh, so typically, like in the past, I would you know receive an email, read it, and then write out a response, but it would take me a lot of time. Uh, now I rely on AI tools more and more. So I will you know put down the bullet points of how I want to respond, and then I'll have AI compose it. Um, I've been jumping between different tools. Um, so I use a combination, like I use Gemini, um, I use Copilot, which is directly in Outlook. Um, I also use ChatGPT to help with that. Um, and so I use a lot of these different tools um, to help me compose my response. Um, in terms of tools, uh, like outside of just composing stuff, um, pulling together YouTube videos, I like especially scripting, coming up with titles, uh, all of that, I rely on a lot of kind of the text-based uh, AI tools um, to assist with that. Um, and that's that's been a huge help. Yeah. Um, in terms of video production, we use it a ton uh, when editing videos. So just being able to remove noise uh, that's captured, say, by a microphone, if there's background noise. Uh, you know, here at the studio, sometimes we'll have a leaf blower going outside and, and the microphone picks it up. Uh, but with the AI noise removal, it, it's able to get rid of that. Um, and that's in uh, DaVinci Resolve. So we use that. Um, but yeah, so I, I think one of the interesting things about running a tech channel is I get to just experiment with and play with a lot of these different AI tools. Um, but I, I think in terms of like some of my favorites, I, I like Gemini, ChatGPT, Copilot, uh, DaVinci Resolve is another one. Uh, those, are, those are tools that I go back to again and again. Um, and and what about on your side? Are, are you are you using a lot of these different AI tools? Like what what are some of your favorites? Well, it's interesting you mentioned working on this channel because we are exposed to so many AI tools with whether it's more startups or companies that just haven't necessarily, you know, hit it big yet come to us, ask us to look at these AI tools, check them out, do tutorials on them. So getting to experiment and use some of these, you know, smaller AI tools are so interesting to me, whether it's for, like you mentioned, video production, more on the creative side of things, um, at building presentations, things like that. There's so many tools now that I wish existed back when I was in school because it would have made life so much easier. Oh, yeah. yeah. But on a day to day basis, ChatGPT is something that I'm continuing to learn new things about in terms of its capabilities. So that's a lot of fun to use. And I think something that's a really good place for people who are maybe new to AI to get started. Mm -hmm. And Copilot has been something because I am in the Microsoft suite of products all the time. So it's something I'm very comfortable with and familiar with. And seeing the power of Copilot, whether it's creating PowerPoint presentations or helping me with insights in Excel, I'm finding I'm using more and more of as I'm getting more comfortable with it. Right, right. No, it, it's interesting uh, when you already have these existing workflows. So I use Excel a lot to analyze data, um, but now you have AI that's uh, built into Excel and it helps streamline and simplify a lot of the processes that used to take just so much time. Well, and you don't have to remember yeah. all of the different formulas too, which I mm -hmm. find really helpful because I forget them all the time. So just being able to ask mm -hmm. in a prompt, to do something whereas I normally would have to text you to <laughs> remind me what the formula is. So that's super helpful. Oh, so, or sometimes I'd go back and I watch one of my old videos <laughs> to I, figure out how to do something, <laughs> but now now AI can assist me with that. As, yeah, that's not always the best thing to do. You see how much younger you used to be, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, 
But so what do you suggest then to people who are maybe new to AI and they want to start incorporating it in their everyday life, whether it's personal, at work, but they don't really know where to get started? What what would you recommend? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, if you look at about just about any product in the market, um, they're all incorporating AI more and more into them. So like whether you're an Excel user, a PowerPoint user, uh, <clears throat> even video editing software, yeah. um, more and more of these tools are having AI embedded in them. Um, so chances are, if you're using software, you're you're going to you know have the ability to use AI to assist you with it. Um, <clears throat> I think my my guidance is you know you have this new technology, you have all these new features coming out, uh, start exploring them. You know, like <clears throat> one of my favorite examples is like in Excel. You know, let's say that there's you know a process that you do on a frequent basis, or maybe you you know analyze a sheet. Try using AI to do that task and and see how how it does. Um, see if you find that it's helping you save time, or maybe it's taking something that's complex and making it easier for you. Uh, but I, I, I think my guidance is, you know, just start experimenting with it, see what it's capable of. Um, if you're writing an email and it's taking you a long time to think through your messaging, you know, maybe ask AI to assist you with that and, and see if it helps uh, help save time, or maybe your message is more effective after you use AI. Um, so I, I think the best guidance is like just start using it and see what it's capable of. No, I I agree with you. I think when I first began using more of these AI tools, I found the greatest comfort in using tools that I was already familiar with, Mm -hmm. like Excel or Word or OneNote. And then being able to see how the AI that they're incorporating in those tools can help me be more productive, Mm -hmm. whereas I don't have to learn a whole new tool from scratch. I can just use something I'm already familiar with Mm -hmm. and begin playing with those features. Canva is another one. They're incorporating a lot more AI in everything across the board with Canva. And that's a tool that most people have become familiar with and are using. And so if you're already familiar with how to use Canva, incorporating those AI features to get you started can be a a great help. And I I, I almost think uh, when a company designs AI in the product the best, you don't even really notice it's AI. So like I I think of Canva as an example. Um, Let's say you have a photo up and you want to remove the background well like in your mind you're like well i just want to change the background um and there's a button that says you know remove background and behind the scenes it's ai doing it but like i don't think the user cares if it's ai or not exactly like you're just getting rid of the background yeah so i I think like even like how do you get started with ai it's like just use the apps that you typically use you're trying to get something done and then just use the different features or the tools that help you do that whether it's ai or not that's a really good point you don't necessarily need to worry about categorizing it as mm-hmm. ai it's just a tool that you can use that's right. allowing you to make life easier it's just additional features yeah. and products that you now have access to now talking about new products and new features you were recently at microsoft ignite mm-hmm. which is a tremendous conference for those lucky enough to get to attend AI was a huge topic this year. What were some of the things that excited you the most or things that were most memorable to you? Yeah, so uh, for for people who don't know, Microsoft Ignite, it's I, I think like 20,000 attendees and maybe 100,000 something people attending, but it, it tends to be a lot of, you know, organizations, uh, business decision makers who are coming in and they're looking at, you know, what is Microsoft working on? What are some of those innovations coming up? Um, so that, that's the focus of the event. Uh, and I, I think compared to... <clears throat> previous ignites that I've been to, um, the focus was, you know, all in on AI and kind of embedding AI into more and more Microsoft products. Um, so whether that's, you know, Windows, whether it's, you know, the the traditional office suite, like Word, Excel, PowerPoint, um, there are also tools coming out that help you manage all these different agents. Uh, Cause now you have more and more people creating their own agents that go off and do work on their behalf. And now you need some way to manage it. Um, so I, I think my big takeaway is like, wow, like AI is just being embedded everywhere. Um, and, and I think um, it's, you know, there, there's a lot of work. I, I think my big takeaway is there's a lot of work that people do kind of this, you know, not the most exciting work, kind of this, uh, the drudgery of work where you're doing these boring tasks again and again. Um, and and you see this future where a lot of that work, you could have these agents go off and kind of complete some of that for you. Um, and then you focus more on the higher value, the more interesting things. Um, so I, I think, I mean, I, I think there's a ton of stuff coming out and uh, and and there's a ton of innovation happening here. Um, and, and so it's, it's just kind of exciting to see where things will go. That's great. Wonderful. Well, 
Now the holidays are right around the corner, like we mentioned. <laughs> non AI question for you, Kevin. But those of us, or those of people who follow the channel, <laughs> know that you like chocolate chip cookies. I do. <laughs> and so, with the holidays rapidly approaching, what is your favorite holiday cookie? Yeah, so I'm I'm a big fan of chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> uh, that's that's one of my favorites. It's just the the you know the mix of the you know the right number of chocolate chips tastes good. Um, I also like my uh, my in laws make really good uh, snickerdoodle cookies. Uh, they're also good. Okay. Um, let's see, uh, sugar cookies like while they are plain, sometimes like they hit the spot. Um, I will say, uh, what is it? The uh, the Christmas butter cookies. Christmas butter cookies. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I you know the, you the butter mean. cookies. Yes. Like they, they always, uh, they're always available during the holidays. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I definitely have a weak spot for them, and I probably end up consuming far too many. <laughs> so it's the type of thing where I get one box during the holidays, and then like once that box is done, like that's it until next year. That's pretty good willpower. So, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, that's pretty good. Awesome. But yeah, no, I, I, I love cookies, and and hopefully everyone else does. Um, but they have to be Kevin Cookie Company cookies. <laughs> 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 Wonderful. Well, Kevin, thank you for answering my questions. This was a lot of fun to get to chat about AI. And uh, with the holidays right around the corner, hopefully you can take a little bit of downtime, take a look at some of the videos on the channel and learn about some of these AI tools that maybe you haven't yet discovered yet. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Kevin.